probably tie it in there. Okie dokie. So, starting in Shavasana. Laying down, laying our bodies out on our mats, taking time to arrive on the mat. Maybe you've been up super early like me and your mind is swirling with things to do for today. Maybe you've not long been up and already you're thinking about things. So we just separate the next hour, giving it back to our bodies, 60 minutes on the mat, that is all. Your to-do lists will still be there, but hopefully you'll feel a little bit more refreshed, a little bit more open-minded and ready to deal with your to-do list and your day. You can be breathing naturally on the mat. And I want to, while you're laying down, think about the curves in your spine. You should have one curve behind your neck, lifting off of the mat. The curve of your mid back, pressed and grounded into the mat. Another curve of your lumbar spine. So actually the lumbar spine shouldn't really be pressed into the mat. It should be maybe slightly off. And then your pelvis, the curve of your pelvis pushed into the mat. And only when we have all these natural curves back in the spine are we able to use our bodies properly. Are they able to function correctly because our spine is in the neutral position. And I want you while you're laying down. Hi Beverly, she's joined us. So we're just going to start laying down in Shavasana, body on the mat. I want you to bring your hands to just below your heart, the center of your chest. And I want you to find your sternum so you can press against your body. And then you'll start to feel your rib cage. And I want you just to walk your fingers, press your fingers along the bottom of your rib cage. When you're laying down, this is much easier. You walk them all the way round to the sides and you'll probably meet the mat. And then walk them down the sides of your body till you reach your hip bones, pushing in your hip bones, and then you're gonna walk your fingers in around your hip bones, and you're just gonna to come to your pelvis and you can hold it there. What we've just done is walked the surface area of a deep stabilizing muscle called the transverse abdominals. When I say abdominals, everybody thinks six pack, everybody thinks those ones right at the top. That is not them. These are a deep, deep layer under all of that, that work to support you, support your core, support your back, support your body. It is such an intelligent muscle that it switches on a moment before you sneeze. 
it knows you're going to sneeze and works to protect your back before you do. So with your fingers, just um, by your hip bones, walk them in slightly so they're at, around your pelvis, around your um, lower abdomen. So you push them in and I want you to cough. <coughs> cough again. <coughs> what you would have felt, hopefully, underneath your fingertips, ever so gently, you would have felt your TVA, your transverse abdominals, switching on. We use these in everyday life. However, what happens in 2020 when we work in an office all day or we spend a lot of time driving, sitting down, they start to turn off. They start to become weak and it's no fault of your own. We're all the same, we're all guilty of it. It's our bodies haven't adapted to our current lifestyles. Have you ever heard anyone say, I just sneezed and my back went out? Well, that was maybe because their transverse abdominals were weak and weren't protecting their back as they sneezed. So with today's class, we're gonna go through some just normal asana practice, some sun salutations, everything that you have seen before, but we're gonna bring a slight awareness to these transverse abdominals, or TVA is what we call them. So remember that cough, that tenseness, we're gonna go there. However, what we don't want is we don't want that tensed, prepared to be punched in the stomach kind of core for the next hour. It does need to be relaxed off, so you kind of want to, if that's your 100% of that tensing, you kind of want to find a 2 to 10% of that tensing. So I would like you all to breathe in, relax your tummy, breathe in, let your abdominals fill out, your ribs widen, and then as you breathe out, I want you to bring your navel to your spine and turn that TVA on just a tiny bit, not full on, just a little bit. Then relax, breathe in, let everything get bigger, and breathe out, navel to spine, turn it on just a little bit. Two more times. Breathe in, relax the belly and the chest, Breathing out, the belly comes on very slightly. You can feel strength around your back. One last time, breathing in. Breathing out, navel to spine. The core is turned on. Appropriately, not too much. And this is what we're gonna be working with today. So when you're ready, bring your knees into your chest, give them a hug. Maybe you have a little rock and roll of the pelvis, side to side. And you've got two choices. You can um, fall the body over to one side and come up very slowly if you've got any blood pressure, low blood pressure problems or get any dizziness. Or you can start to rock through the spine and coming up to a seated position this way. There you go. You would have had to have used your TVA ever so slightly to get up if you come that way. I'm going to come to a seated position. I'm going to come onto a map, um, pillow, blanket, small cushion, anything you want to raise your hips as much as necessary to invite the natural curves back into your spine. From here, we're just going to do two breaths, how we did when we were laying down. So breathing in, natural, breathing out, navel to spine, grow a little taller with the crown of the head getting taller. One more time, breathing in, relax. Breathing out, navel to spine, turn it on a little bit. Very nice, and then relax. And we just have an awareness of the core. The minute we start to um, change the shape of our spine, it is harder to keep those TVA muscles switched on. 
We're just gonna roll the shoulders forward. We're gonna breathe in, lift the shoulders to the ears. Breathe out, roll them down. Breathe in. Breathe out. One last time. We're gonna have a few cat cows in the seated position. We're gonna come as far forward, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see me, as you like. So we're breathing in, the chest comes forward, pelvis tilts forward, the shoulder blades come back. And breathing out, we're gonna tip the pelvis back, scoop the tummy back round the shoulders. Again, breathing in, cow position with the spine. Breathing out, cat position, scoop it back. So we're just gonna do these with our own breath. If you're feeling really lethargic on a Sunday morning and you need a bit of pick-me-up, then use your breath to do this. And how you would do this is you start to speed up the breath. So you can go. That's gonna get a little bit of fire in your belly and wake you up a little bit. If you're happy, being calm, and in a good space, you can take it as slow as you like. Being mindful that we're moving the spine and the shoulders, lifting the chin and touching the chin to the chest. Nice. And when you're ready, come into a neutral position. We're going to take the right leg and we're going to take it out to the side. If you've got any knee issues, you may want to have a nice wider gap there. That's absolutely fine. Don't forget, sitting on a cushion will help lift the pelvis if one starts to, um, one hip starts to rise. So we're going to work on another hip stabilizing, um, another core stabilizing muscle just very quickly. We're going to put our hands on our hip or right into the crease. And we're going to focus on lifting this hip up ever so gently. We're going to get mobility into that hip socket. Squeezing the bum at the top. And back down. Nice and easy. Now, if you've got your hand the same as mine, then your thumb, under your thumb is a muscle called glute medius or gluteus medius. And that is what's working right now. And that also helps to protect the back. It works with the TVA muscle. Breathing in, up. Breathing out, down. A couple more. Nice. Going to bring this foot out in front. Uh, in fact, leave it there for one moment. We're going to take our hands in front of us. And we're going to walk over to the left, a little gentle sage twist. Try to um, keep both sit bones grounded. It's very gentle, you won't be facing behind you. And coming back to the center. I'm going to bring this right leg in front. And we're gonna cradle it. So if you're able to hold on to your foot and your knee, then you can come here. If not, it works just as well. In fact, you get a nicer rotation by bringing your hand underneath your thigh. And you're just gonna give it a rock. So a couple of positions. This bottom leg can do whatever it wants to do, whatever feels good. So you just rock him. Nice. Getting in. We're gonna take our two fingers, index and middle fingers, and you're gonna place it into your toe. If your hand doesn't reach your foot, grab your ankle or grab your shin. And we're gonna bring the foot out to the side. Now I'm gonna lift up onto a pillow because my back was rounding. Um, so we're here, breathing in. And as we breathe out, our leg is gonna come forward. 
Breathing in, pull it back under the armpit. Breathing out, reach forward. Two more, breathing in. Breathing out. Remember, holding here. Breathing out there. Very nice. Gonna take that ankle and place it on top of the opposite knee. Flex the foot of the right leg. And you're gonna start to bend the left leg. So we're into a figure four or a pigeon stretch, sitting up. Breathe. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see. So if you've got very tight um, hamstrings, lower back, you're probably gonna be here. And if you want to increase the stretch, you can walk it forward a little bit so your chest is nearer. Breathe. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna rock from side to side, very gentle. Again, sitting all day at the office or you do a lot of driving. It's gonna be very sore, very stiff, this part of the body. Gonna open up the hips. Good. From here, you can either take that left leg out long, or if you would like to, you can try to bend it underneath so that your ankle and knees are stacked into fire pit pose. If you've got any pillows or cushions, you can wedge the space in between the opposite knee and ankle, or you can have that left leg out in front. Same, um, working the same muscles. Breathe, this is a stretch. It's a place we don't get into very often, so it can feel unfamiliar. And take in one leg out at a time. Give yourself a little shuffle. We're going to go on to the opposite side. So the right leg comes in, left leg comes behind. We're going to start with those glute squeezes. So hand on the hip. And you just, um, if you want to, you can push your fingers onto the floor just for a little bit of support, but they're not going to be taking any weight. And then you're just going to very gently lift the hip, squeeze back down. The hip bone comes off the floor, back down. So breathing in, breathing out. In and out. Squeezing the bum cheek or that glute med, that muscle underneath your thumb. And I'll be honest, you most likely won't even feel it because we don't use it that often. We should, but we don't, including myself. A few more. Keep going. Last one. And back down. Hands, fingertips in front. Walk them round to the side, Sage's twist, very gentle. Growing taller in the body to create space so you can twist. Maybe pulling my belly button back here helps me get round a little bit more. So having those TVA muscles switched on slightly helps me to protect my back and make me more mobile. Breathe in. And walk your fingertips round to the front. You're gonna take this left leg and we're gonna cradle it like a baby. So choose what you prefer. If you want your hands underneath your, um, your shins, your calves, or you can cradle it. The right leg, the leg on the floor, does whatever you want it to do. If you want it out straight, which often feels um, more comfortable for me, or you can have it supporting you under here. So rocking, getting into that hip socket, lubricating it. 
oiling into the joints as we say. And you're gonna take your two fingers in between your thumbs or you can hold onto your ankle or your shin. You're gonna pull the knee back. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see me. And breathing out, let it out long. So I'm gonna hold onto my shin so you can see. Breathing in, pull it back, opening up the abductors, the groin, the pelvis. Breathing out, let it go long. Two more, breathing in. Breathing out, maybe it doesn't bend, maybe you cut, um, it doesn't straighten, maybe it comes here, that's absolutely fine. Breathing in. And breathing out, take that right leg out long, the left foot comes above the top knee. And you're going to bend the right knee. You might be only be able to have a slight bend or it may have to stay straight depending on how tight those muscles are. I need you to listen to your body and decide. But my foot's going to come flat to the floor. This already I can feel inside that hip there. Remember, you can walk your torso towards your body to create a deeper stretch if that is not enough for you, or you can walk your hands further away. We'll just start a gentle rock from side to side. More mobility. It doesn't have to be perfect. Foot on the floor, foot off the floor, whatever feels Good, you're just co concentrating on this bent knee. And taking that left, right leg out straight. If you want to, come to fire pit on the other side or you can hold it here. Any pillows, any blankets, any books, anything you want to wedge in between there just to help you relax off. Really stretching the hips, any pressure in the knees, any pain, that is a no. Take your legs out long, we don't want that. Finally breathe. Nice, and then just gently uncross the legs, take them out, give them a shake or a windshield wiper, what feels good, feels good, give it to your body. Now we're gonna come over to all fours for a cat cow. Wrists underneath shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tuck your toes if you wish or not, tops of feet onto the floor. Breathing in, drop the belly, lift the head and chest. Breathing out, scoop the belly up, tuck the pelvis under and let your head drop. Two more, breathing in, belly to the mat. Breathing out, push the floor away, tuck the pelvis, let the shoulder blades slide away. One more, breathing in, tilt the hips to the sky. And breathing out, push away. Back to neutral, tuck your toes if you haven't done already. You're gonna lift your hips, straighten your legs, but not lock them out, and come into a downward dog. So your knees are slightly bent. Two hands, two feet, taking equal weight. Head is effortless in this position, yet every other muscle is working. So what you find in this position, is people that are super bendy, you'll find their hips go up and their ribs will flare out. This will put their spine in a very unnatural position. So we do want the hips to the sky and we can get that by bending our knees. But I want you also to think about those TVA muscles. So give yourself a cough if you want to, just to make sure that they're working ever so slightly. Space in your armpits. I'm gonna work to try and straighten your legs as much as they go for you. And you're gonna bring your feet together slightly. 
You're going to lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Wherever it goes is absolutely fine. You'll notice that more weight is in your left foot, so you're getting a stretch of the Achilles. Bend the right knee. And I want you to do some ankle rolls on that right foot. Some one way and some the other. And placing that right foot back down. Left foot reaches the ceiling. So we're stretching that right Achilles. Bend the left knee. Rotate the ankle. And the other way. And placing that left foot to the floor. You're going to walk your feet to your hands, whichever way you feel comfortable. I'm going to try to do tippy toe because I've just seen it on a video this week and it felt really nice. So, coming into a forward fold at the front of your mat. And you're just going to gently roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, tucking the pelvis under first, stacking each bone. Roll the shoulders back, lift your chin, slowly lift your gaze. And breathe, and you may be a little bit like headed because we was upside down for quite a little bit. Just let that come back. Let the dizziness fade. Come to Tadasana at the front of your mat if you're not there already. Shoulders back and down. So the first movement, you're not going to be able to see me, I'm going to move over so slightly. We're going to um, breathe in and take our arms overhead. We're going to hold here for the moment. What I want you to see is what people do when they turn their TVA muscles off. So when we look up and they lean back, you'll see that the ribs flare. That means that tells us that those core muscles are not switched on. They're not supporting the back and everything else is holding on for dear life. So what we do is we tuck the ribs in and it means you might not go back as far, but it means your body is supported. Keep breathing here and keeping that same activation in your core, I want you to fold forward with a flat back or swan dive. So we've got a slight activation and when you're halfway, relax into the forward fold. Let your head hang, bend your knees. If you want to, your hands can touch the floor, shins or thighs. You're gonna step back as far as you can with the right knee, the right foot. And we're gonna drop the right knee to the ground. You can keep your toes curled under if you wish, or you can place the tops of your feet onto the mat. You're gonna grow long in the body, sink into the hips, Knee underneath, knee directly over your ankle is what I'm trying to say. And when you're ready, we're gonna breathe in, lift tall, bring your hands to heart center. Again, this is another position. You'll see the ribs flare. I want you to really think about activating that core muscle just slightly. It's gonna support your lower back. Press the top of your foot into the mat. Press the front foot into the mat. Squeeze in that right bum cheek. You're gonna work in unison with that TVA to protect your back. You're gonna breathe in, lift the arms overhead. And as we breathe out, we're gonna cactus the arms and pull the muscles of our side bodies down. Again, breathing in, breathing out. One more. And out. 
place their hands to the floor so they're in line with that left foot. You're going to bring that left knee to meet the right. Grow long. Lower down. Elbows tucked into the side so you come to your face flat on the mat. Adjust your hands so they're by your bottom rib. Feet can be as wide as the mat if anyone has any lower back problems. Push your hips into the floor. Using your back body, grow long. Lift the head and chest. Breathe here. You're going to really feel those muscles pushing into the mat. Activate those TVA muscles. Give yourself a cough if you need to work out how to turn them on. Breathe. And relax, back down, relax it, let it go. Pushing back either into child's pose or into downward dog. If you're in downward dog, place your knees onto the mat. If you're in child's pose, come in up to a, almost a tabletop position. And you're gonna bring your right foot to your right hand. Help it along if you need to. Walk it in slightly. Untuck the back toes if you wish, grow long. And coming up, hands to heart center. Get a little deeper into the hips, push the back foot into the mat. Place your hands either side of the feet, bring that back foot to meet the front. And hands on hips, bend the knees, reverse the swan dive so you come up with a flat back into Tadasana. We're gonna go straight onto the other side, breathing in, hands overhead. Breathing out, folding forward, flat back. And all the way down to a forward fold. You're gonna step back with the left foot as much as you can and place the knee on the floor. Grow long in the body. Choose the back foot position that serves you best. And coming up, hands to heart center. So this is the second time that we've been in this lunge, so we can start to get a little deeper. We're going to breathe in, lift the arms overhead. Breathing out, pull the arms down, cactus the arms. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. Very nice. Place your hands in line with that foot. The right foot meets the left, so you're in a half kneeling position. You can bring your torso forward so your hands are slightly behind and lower down, bend the elbows. Nice. Adjust the hands. Place your feet wherever you need them to be to support your back. Push your hips into the floor, the top of your feet into the floor. Breathe in, lift your head and chest. Keep breathing here. Working those back muscles. Tummies turned on to support the back. And relax back down. Tuck the toes, push back into child's pose or downward dog. And breathe. Everybody to a kneeling position, so drop your knees or come in up to a tabletop. Propel your bum back, bring your left foot to meet the left hand, however possible. Walk it in slightly, untuck the back toes, grow the body long. And when you're ready, coming up. So second time we're lunging on this side, maybe get a little deeper. Breathe. 
Place your hands in line with your feet. Bring that back foot to meet the front into a forward fold. Maybe you can feel a little longer here in your forward fold because we've been here before. Let your head hang. Hands to your hips, bend your knees, pull your elbows and sh shoulders back, coming up to a flat back. Bring your hands to heart center, close your eyes and have a breath. Relax your tummy. So the reason we don't want to squeeze our TVA muscles, those abdominal muscles, 100% all the time is because then we are overriding its natural responsibility. We're overriding it doing its job, taking its responsibility away. And what happens? is then it forgets how to work properly. So you never want to keep your tummy muscles turned on all day, every day. But we do want them to be aware just a little bit. So that's why we turn them on 2%. So we're gonna go for another sun salutation again. We're gonna go a little bit faster. I'm gonna give you a different variation, but remember that you can always do the variation that we just did. So, breathing in, take your arms overhead. This time, do you want to lift your breastbone to have a little back bend? Breathing out, swan dive forward, bend the knees, hinge at the hips, flat back, fold down. We're gonna come up half high, breathing in, navel to spine, Chin is tucked, breathing out, folding back down. Hands meet the floor. Stepping back as far as you can with the right foot. So you have the option to put the right knee on the floor or if you want to, you can stay in a high lunge. If you're staying in this high lunge, you're gonna to have to really push your feet into the floor as your body grows long. And we're gonna come up hands to heart center. So you always have the option to put that back knee on the floor. Breathing in, lift the arms overhead. Breathing out, take the elbows wide. Maybe you can sink a little deeper as you do. Breathing in, grow your body tall. Breathing out, sinking deeper into the hips. One last time, breathing in. And breathing out here. Hands either side of the foot. Left foot meets the right. High plank or half plank, up to you. Grow your body long, tuck the elbows in, lower down. Untuck the toes, readjust your hands. Breathe in, lift the head and chest. Breathing out, tuck the toes, child's pose or downward dog. And you need to make a decision what your body needs. I'm here to guide you. I'm not in your body. This is your responsibility to adjust the practice to suit you. So if you're in child's pose, lift up to downward dog. Lift the right foot and bring it towards the front right hand. Bring it in. You have the option to place the back knee on the floor or you can stay in a high lunge. Grow the body forward, breathing in, lifting up. Have a couple of breaths here, whichever version you've chose. You've chose it for a reason. Ground the feet, push the feet right into the floor. Tummy is turned on, supporting the torso that's balancing on your legs. Place your hands in line with the foot. Bring that back foot to meet the front. 
forward fold. Relax, let it go here. And hands on hips, elbows and shoulders back, coming up, flat back, standing at Tadasana. We're gonna go on the other side. Breathing in, take your arms overhead. Add the little back bend if you want to by lifting your breastbone. Forward fold, swan dive. And folding underneath. Lift your head and chest, tuck your tummy, tuck your chin. And breathing out, relax back. Stepping back with the left leg, you know the options that you have. Grow the body tall, coming up, hands to heart centre, maybe a little wobble. Breathing in, grow the body tall, reaching up. Breathing out, sink into the hips, pull those shoulder blades down. Breathing in, grow. Breathing out, down. Last time, breathing in, grow tall. Breathing out, sink and pull. Hands in line with your feet. Right foot meets the left. You have full plank or half plank. Grow long, lower down. Untuck the toes. Breathing in, lift the head and chest. Breathing out, tuck the toes, child's pose or downward dog. And breathe. Widen your collarbones, relax your face. Everybody into downward dog. Lift the left foot and bring it somewhere towards the left hand. Walk it in slightly. Option back knee onto the ground, grow tall. Push through the feet. Coming up to a high lunge, hands to heart center, breathe. Hands on the ground in line with your foot. Right foot meets the left, forward fold, hang here. Hands on hips. Elbows and shoulders back, flatten the back, bend the knees, pushing up to Tadasana. Hands by your side, palms facing forward. Have some breaths here. Pause. Close your eyes if that helps. Gain control. Sun salutations are meant to get us sweating, meant to get our heart racing just a little bit. It's our job now to bring everything back down. Still standing tall, still standing strong. And rest. Bring your hands together. You're gonna to step back with the right foot. Roll the right heel down. I want you to this time make sure that your heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. So normally we go heel to heel, but this time we're gonna go heel to arch. Bend the front knee. You're gonna turn the torso to the long edge of your mat raise your arms. I want you to rotate your arms 
backwards or rotate your shoulders backwards so your palms come up. And then without moving the shoulders, keeping that outward rotation, I want you to turn your palms back. Very nice. Then if it's possible, we look over the front hand. That front knee is heading towards the little toe edge of the foot and the back foot is just working just as hard. That back foot and leg is active, it's strong. Our TVA muscles, we're sucking them in. We're supporting them, supporting our tummy, supporting our chest. Placing forearm onto front thigh, coming over into side angle. Rotate that top shoulder back. Push your forearm into that thigh to create a little bit of leverage to create some rebound. Pushing still, breathing here. We're gonna come up, straighten the front leg, T position the arms, reach forward, triangle pose. Tip the torso. Your hand can be pushed against your leg to create some leverage or bend and um, rest on your shin or your thigh. Rotate the top shoulder backwards. If this is too much in the top arm, take your back hand, place it on your sacrum. You're gonna have to really squeeze your bum, squeeze your hips. Grow the body long. Remember, tucking the ribs in. Very nice. Coming up to a T position and cartwheel the hands back down. We're in a lunge. Step the back foot to meet the front. Roll it up gently. Roll the shoulders back. Chin lifts. Breathe. So hopefully all that hip sequence, hip opening we did at the beginning, supports your practice now. Doesn't feel as tight in the area as it normally does. Hands together, heart center. Stepping back with the opposite leg now. So the left leg, I'm gonna to turn to face you. So you're in a high lunge, you're gonna rotate that back foot, that back heel down and adjust your feet so that the front heel is in line with the arch of the back foot. Turn your torso to the side, long edge of your mat, lift your arms, rotate those arms backwards, creating space, bringing the shoulder blades together and turn your palms down, keeping them in that place. Tucking the ribs in, looking over the front hand. Bend a little deeper in the front knee, head into that little toe edge, while the back foot works just as hard. You push through the foot of the back foot, you'll feel the whole leg engage. In particular, you're gonna feel the left bum cheek, that left glute knee that we worked at the beginning, that's working here, that's holding that femur into that hip socket. We're gonna bring the forearm to the thigh, coming over side angle. Again, if this is too much for your hand, you can place your back of your palm onto your sacrum. Might wanna get a little deeper. Rotate the shoulder back, push into that thigh, Grow the body long, push your feet into the ground, and then breathe. Easy. <laughs> We're gonna come up, T position the arms, straighten the front leg, turn the torso to the long edge of the mat, reach forward, 
tip the torso, triangle pose. If it's comfortable, you can look at your top hand or down at your shin or your foot. Remember, you can place that top hand on the back of your sacrum. Rotate the top shoulder backwards. Bring that bottom shoulder forwards. Same with the hips. Top hip rotates back and you're trying to get this bottom hip forward. Keep breathing. Growing long. Tummy muscles active, supporting your back. Bend the front knee. Arms to T position, cartwheel back down. That front foot, take it to meet the back foot, knees to ground, child's pose. Knees together, knees as wide as the mat. Take whichever child pose you need right now. If your head doesn't meet the floor, plump it up with pillows, bricks, or you can make a little pillow with your hands or arms. And breathe. You can let your tummy muscles go here. because we're in stillness. You can let the TVA muscles go here. It's in this stillness that the magic happens. That our bodies start to grow, start to adapt. Digesting everything that we've just done. Take your hands out long if they're not already. Walk your hands in so you're coming up to a kneeling position and we're going to flip over onto our backs. Nearly there. So come into Shavasana first of all. Remember the position that we started in. That little space behind that lumbar spine. If it's not there, Maybe try walking your shoulder blade down a little bit and see if that invites a little curve there. Relax your tummy here. You're gonna bend the left foot and bring the right knee into your chest. And you're gonna just move it out slightly to your armpit if you can, hug it in. You can take your forearm to your shin. You're just stretching the groin, space in the hips. If not into your chest, it's just slightly outwards to your armpit. Taking that same leg, I want you to cross your thighs. We've got a nice cross leg. If you can, you can tuck that um, foot behind the calf. If not, just keep it here. Try and cross at the thigh bone. Push that left foot into the floor and move your hips over to the right, just a couple of centimeters. T position your arms, root your shoulders into the floor and drop, relax the knees over to your left. Maybe your right shoulder is going to come off a little bit. It's fine. Gravity. Pulling on those knees. If it feels comfortable, you can take your gaze over the right shoulder. You can cactus your arms if T position doesn't feel comfortable, if you don't have space. And breathe into the twist.
So our tummy is also relaxed here. Nice deep breaths. Really feeling the space in that right rib cage, right hip, right armpit. Now we're going to start moving again and bringing our knees to centre. So we need to activate the TVA, bring that navel to spine to help support us as we bring our knees back to centre. You can see that we needed to activate that to support our body as we move. Take your legs back out, long arms by your side. Maybe you can feel the subtle effects of that twist. Maybe your right hip, right bum cheek, IT band down the outside of your leg. Bend your right knee so the right foot is on the floor and bring your left knee into your chest first of all and then take it out to the armpit. You can maybe give it a hug. If um, hugging it in means that your head and shoulders come off the floor because that's quite a tight area, then just use your hand, just gentle. Just aiming it to the shoulder position. You want to relax the upper body here. In this position, I absolutely love taking big belly breaths and feeling my belly on the back of my, uh, on the front of my thigh. One of my favorite things, I'm a weirdo. I like it in child's pose too. Take that left leg and cross the thigh bones. If you want to, you can tuck the foot under. Press, press through the right foot, lift your hips up slightly, take them over to the left a few inches and drop the knees over to the right side, hands T position. Try and ground that left shoulder into the floor, but don't be too hard on yourself. If it comes off, it comes off. If you want to, you can look over the left hand. So maybe this side feels different to the other side, more open, maybe more tighter, just explore that, let gravity pull your knees down. You can use pillows if it's super uncomfortable to protect your knees so they don't go too far. Breathing into that left hip. Left rib cage. Left armpit. Getting a little deeper as we hold it for a little longer. Navel to spine, turn the tummy on. Let's pull the knees back up to kneeling. Uncross the legs. Take the legs out long. Hands by your side. Palms up. Your final Shavasana. Absolutely well earned. Maybe you can grow the crown of your head a little longer so the back of your neck is wrinkle free and you drop your chin a little bit. Let your feet, your toes drop out to the side. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your knees. Let 
relax the quads in the front of your thighs. Relax your hip creases, nice and open, nice and cool in now. Relax the tummy muscles, let go. Relax your chest. Let it feel heavy. Relax your shoulder blades and your shoulder joints. Relax your biceps. Relax your elbows. Relax your forearms. Relax your hands and let your fingers curl. Relax your neck. Relax your head, the back of your head, heavy on the mats. Relax your jaw, teeth, tongue. Relax your cheekbones. Relax around your eyes. your eyebrows and the space between the eyebrows. Relax your forehead. And although we're in stillness, our amazing bodies are still working incredibly hard inside. Our hearts are still beating, pumping blood around the whole body. Our lungs are filling up with air and pushing carbon dioxide out. Our stomach is digesting things, our intestines are moving. We are still, but there's lots going on. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes, some wrist rolls, maybe take your head from side to side. And place one foot on the ground. And the other, bring your knees into your chest. Very gentle, hold in. You're gonna drop your knees and let your shoulders go with you. So you roll over to the right into a fetal position. And final breaths here. And push in through your hands, come up to a seated position. Legs crossed, legs underneath, kneeling, hands to heart center, close your eyes. When we're in a yoga class, when we're in any outside environment, gym classes, we always look and compare ourselves to everybody else. Look how strong they are, look how flexible they are, look how 
they're doing this and we compare ourselves and we put our own bodies down. Our bodies are an amazing piece of science. And we should be very grateful that they work well enough to allow us to have this last hour on the map. Drop your nose to your fingertips. Namaste. Well done, everybody. I always hate having to rush up to unmute you all. <laughs>